share with you the basic steps on how to create this giant troll prop. After I decided to make a fairy tale themed Halloween party, I just knew I had to have a troll. Trolls appear in several fairy tales and I knew I had to have one. The problem was, when I was shopping around to the different Halloween stores, there was barely any trolls to be found. And the trolls that there were there, they were so expensive. So I decided to make one. And in this video, I'll share with you some tips and tricks and some ideas on how you can create your own troll for your own parties or haunted houses. Some of the materials I use for this prop includes tissue paper, spray glue, glue, duct tape, tin foil, assorted cardboard of all different shapes and sizes, poster board, acrylic and poster paint, spray paint, paint brushes, and then some assorted things that you would apply to your troll. Now I use some fake hair, some clothing, some costume horns, and some fake moss for the rock. If you start from scratch and buy your materials all brand new, it's going to cost about $125 to make this prop. Now keep in mind that's still cheaper than what you could buy it in the store for, for the size that you can make this thing. However, chances are you're going to build from materials around your house or you already have these materials already, so you're going to save a lot of money. And it took about 13 hours to make this prop, but that's because I was meticulous with the details. If you just want to make a general troll, it's going to take a lot less time than this. Now to begin with, I did something that I recommend everybody should do, which is use recycled materials and recycle your props. If you look closely at the basic structure of this troll, I got to start relatively quickly with this because I used a prop that I had used before. If you look closely, I used my snowman as the troll prop. You can see the general outlines here. This saves me time and money. And for me, the hardest part and most tedious part of a prop build is building the main structure because that has got to be solid. So, because I built the snowman before, I just applied some tissue paper, some tin foil, and some cardboard to make the arms and the feet and the general body. For the head of this troll, I also did something that saved me a lot of time and money. And that is, instead of starting from scratch and building the head, I took an old clown mask and a set of costume ears that I bought at the thrift store and I put those together. That clown mask already came with this fake hair attached to it. So I took those two things, put them on top of a paper ball, wrapped them up in tin foil, and painted a light layer of paint over it and it gave me the general structure of my troll. So right away I saved a lot of time and money by taking different parts of costumes, putting them together to create a prop. Now as you can see for the body of this troll, I used a healthy amount of cardboard, tissue paper, and duct tape. Duct tape is great for making a general structure and making something as solid as can be. Then I took that mixture of tissue paper and paint and applied it over the surfaces that are going to be exposed. And for this troll, not much is going to be exposed. We're going to see the belly, the hands, and the feet. So I made sure that I put this mixture over it. If you want to learn more about this technique, I have another video that showcases that technique. And it's also at this point that I want to share this tip with you that I use for many of my props which is make your props sectional for easy storage. You can probably see how these arms and the body are actually not connected. They are one piece that goes on top of another. And you can't see it in this photo, but the whole body comes apart from the bottom. And I attach that with a pole going down the middle. The whole point is think about some ways that you can make your props come apart and dismantle for easy storage and or to use again in another prop in future years. 
As I mentioned earlier, a technique that I use quite often is to mix glue, a little bit of water, and paint. Apply it to the surface of the tissue paper, and that creates a solid shell structure. And this allows me to put regular paint, spray paint, on top of that. This is a lot faster and easier than buying all those expensive decoupage products or using the newspaper method that is just so messy and not very easy to use. By applying large pieces of tissue paper, it's easy to move it around and easy to structure it. And I do showcase, again, this method on different videos. So after the tissue paper is applied, I apply a healthy covering of acrylic paint. And I apply the peach acrylic paint to all the surfaces that are going to be exposed. I wanted my troll to look quite dirty and look like he lives under a bridge. So I applied different shades of green acrylic and I made sure I did a sponge method so it was kind of all over the place. After I applied the green, I applied the peach again just very lightly so it was a very subtle detail. The next step was to apply these horns on the troll's head. Now these horns came from Goodwill for 70% off two days after Halloween. And since I knew I was doing a fairy tale theme for the next year, I saved a lot of money, which is a tip that I share in another video. Always know what you're doing for the next year. It saves you so much money. I sprayed the spray glue onto the head of the troll and then sprayed the horns and applied them. I also bought a few wigs of different colors and I used a black wig and I sprayed it onto the head of the troll. I also tore off some hairs and used them for the eyebrows of the troll. And for the long teeth that you see, this is just tin foil rolled up into a large cone wrapped in tissue paper and glue and voila, you have some sharp, evil-looking teeth. Now the foam, kind of rabid look that the troll has around his mouth, all I did was take that spray glue and spray it all over the mouth and then apply a sealer over that. And finally, at the bottom, you can see that I added a little bit of hair for the beard of the troll. I also took that spray glue and applied it to the body and I decided to put a little bit of hair onto the belly. And on the belly I also put a light layer of green paint. Now for the feet you'll see that I applied a little bit of hair to the feet as well. And all of this hair came from the same wig and that wig was only $2.99 so I got a real good deal on that one. The toenails I used some foam board which only cost a dollar and I painted those black and a little bit of green. Now for the feet, I took a mixture of actual mud and rocks and some pine needles. I mixed them together in some brown paint and I applied it as well. I almost wish I didn't do this because of the lighting at the party. Not many people were able to see this detail, but I knew it was there. Now for the rock that the troll was sitting on, I sprayed a healthy layer of metallic silver sprayed some green in the areas that I knew the moss would be and I sprayed some brown at the top and then I drizzled some actual mud and brown paint all over the rock. Once that was dried I dry brushed the rock with a black paint brush then I applied the fake moss and I used that spray glue to apply the fake moss as well. Now, for those of you that are interested in building a bridge with your troll, this is where your recycled materials comes in handy. I always keep a healthy supply of recycled materials of all different kinds because you never know what you're going to need. And usually my builds happen during the summer, and I know a lot of other people that create props, that's when they start to think about Halloween, is actually in May and in June. So I make sure that in the spring, that's when I really keep my supply up. So I use these cardboard thin tube boxes to create the general structure of my bridge and paint it brown and there you go. The final stages of this troll build was to add a shirt to the troll. Now this shirt came from a previous prop that I used before 
a Frankenstein type prop. So I checked that shirt, cut open the belly, and there you go. I also used the hands from a previous prop, which is a Minotaur prop. I took those hands, spray painted them peach, add some fingernails, and now they're troll hands. I highly recommend you do these with your props as much as you can is try to reuse materials and repurpose them. Nobody will be able to tell the difference. And there you go, you have a finished bridge troll prop. And as you can see, I added some lighting and a goat at the top who looks rather scared that he's about to be eaten. We add some blood and we add a goat leg in his hand. And there you go, a finished bridge troll prop. For trick-or-treaters, I placed my troll outside and I placed the goat beneath him and I put some background and some creepy netting all around him. And with some special red lighting in a strategic place, you now have a horrifyingly creepy troll ready to pounce on your trick-or-treaters. If you have any ideas, questions, or comments about this troll prop build, leave them in the comments section below.